In 1662, Pierre de Fermat proposed that the path taken by a ray between two given points is the path that can be travelled in the least time. For instance, if point A is present in some medium and point B in some other medium, the trajectory of light is such that it minimizes time. This principle is known as principle of least time or simply Fermat's principle. This simple statement will become one of the most important ideas in the history of physics. Pierre-Louis Maupertuis extended Fermat's idea to an elegant yet too simple to believe generalization called principle of least action. In 1741, he submitted a paper titled Law of Bodies at Rest to the Paris Academy of Sciences, demonstrating that a system of stationary bodies naturally tend to adopt a position where any change would result in the smallest possible alteration in a quantity that he likened to action. In 1744, he presented another paper to the Paris Academy entitled Agreement of Several Natural Laws That Had Hitherto Seemed to Be Incompatible. This work showcased his findings on the behavior of light during refraction, where it bends upon entering a new medium. He revealed that the total path taken by light from a point in the first medium to the point in the second is optimized to minimize a quantity he once again identified as action. Subsequently, in 1746, he delivered another paper, Laws of Movement and Rest, this time to the Berlin Academy of Sciences. This paper demonstrated that point masses also exhibit the principle of minimizing action. Point masses refer to bodies that for analytical purposes can be treated as having a certain amount of matter concentrated at a single point. But what is this quantity action? Maupertuis defined action as the product of mass of the body of interest, the distance it travels, and the velocity with which it moves. During the same time, Leonard Euler formulated his form of action principle under quite a different framework as he was studying calculus of variations at the time. In a nutshell, consider two points A and B on Euclidean 2D plane such that there is infinite number of possible functions which connect the two points. What function will minimize the path between A and B? Intuitively, it is easy to guess that it will be a straight line. But this must be proved formally. Since another question may arise, what if the path required is the path such that if a ball rolls from point A to point B under the action of gravity, what path takes least time? This problem is called Brachistochrone problem, which was solved by Johann Bernoulli. Euler devised a function called functional, which is actually a function of a function. Suppose this functional is the sum of our desired function, which minimizes some quantity, and a factor alpha and another factor eta, whose first derivative is continuous and vanishes at point A and B. Integral of this functional over the path is the functional which is composed of all possible paths from point A to point B. And minima of this functional is the desired path. Simplify and you get Euler's equation, which can minimize any path between point A and B with respect to any variable you like. In 1751, there arose a dispute over Maupertuis' authority with the mathematician Samuel Gurney, asserting that the principle had been originally conceived by Gottfried Leibniz in 1707. While the arguments presented by Kernig resembled some of the Leibniz's idea, there were no documented references to the principle in Leibniz's known work. Kernig did produce a copy of 1707 letter from Leibniz to Jakob Hermann containing the principle, but unfortunately the original letter was lost. This contentious situation led to accusations of forgery against Kernig and it escalated to the point where even the King of Prussia got involved in defending Mopatui, who was the head of his academy. On the other hand, Voltaire took the side of Kernig during the debate. 
Euler rather than claiming priority for himself strongly supported Maupertui and he personally took part in persecuting Kernick for forgery before Berlin Academy on 13th April 1752. In 1760, Joseph Louis Lagrange laid out significant portion of the calculus of variations and subsequently utilized it to address problems in dynamics. He successfully derived the fundamental equations of motion for mechanical bodies. Building upon Lagrange's work, William Rowan Hamilton in 1834 and 1835 employed the variational principle to the classical Lagrangian function. As a result he obtained the Euler Lagrange equations in the form they are known today. Classical mechanics encompasses various extremal principles beyond the well known Euler Lagrange equations. Among these is Gauss's principle of least constraint and its corollary Hertz's principle of least curvature. These principles offer alternative perspectives on the dynamics of physical systems. Additionally When dealing with systems subject to non-holonomic constraints, the traditional Hamiltonian principle is substituted by D'Alembert principle. But for our purposes, we will stick to Hamilton-Euler-Lagrange formalism of stationary action. A question may arise: What about Newton? Is Newtonian mechanics classical mechanics? Yes, Newtonian mechanics and Hamilton-Euler-Lagrangian mechanics are both equivalent and consistent. Let's take a close look at Lagrangian mechanics. Lagrangian in classical mechanics is defined as the difference of kinetic and potential energies hence making a lagrangian a function of position and velocity but not just cartesian position and velocity this framework has liberty of choosing any coordinates and any number of coordinates hence we call generalized coordinates at as q and generalized velocities as q dot Now we take two points of Ti and Tf for which we want to apply the principle. Integrating Lagrangian under the limits of this time interval, we have defined action. Since action is said to be extremized, we take delta s to be zero. Simplifying right hand side, and we get Euler-Lagrange equations. Notice that it is valid for all number of coordinates present in your system. Since momentum is differently defined in different coordinate systems, we can extract a definition of generalized momentum as the derivative of Lagrangian with respect to generalized velocity. It is easier to take a leap from Hamiltonian formalism of classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, hence we now familiarize ourselves with Hamilton's equation. Hamilton defines a different function than Lagrangian called Hamiltonian which is the function of generalized positions and generalized momenta we can do so by taking lagrange transform of lagrangian and minimizing hamiltonian again to get hamilton's equations now these three formalisms newtonian lagrangian and hamiltonian are all parallel and equivalent one chooses one formalism over the other to solve a problem just for convenience we will now stick to hamilton's formalism in order to proceed Here I introduce a new concept from mathematics just for the purpose of making our equations beautiful and simpler called Poisson's bracket Consider A and B A and B are functions of generalized positions and generalized momenta The Poisson bracket of them is defined as taking derivative of first with respect to positions and derivative of second with respect to momenta plus the reverse How will this make this look simpler? Let's see. Derivative with respect to time of some function a which is a function of generalized positions and generalized momenta, we take the derivative using chain rule. Derivative of a with respect to position and derivative of position with respect to time plus derivative of a with respect to momentum, derivative of momentum with respect to time. Replacing q dot and p dot from hamilton's equation we pack a dot as the poisson bracket of a and hamiltonian now using this hamilton's equations can simply be written such that we replace a with q and p this is an elegant result in the next video we will use these equations to derive schrodinger equation and heisenberg equation of motion don't forget to like and subscribe